Yo, what up? It's your boy, Win J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Odakta. And this isn't a regular episode of Raising a Ninja, but uh, with the school shootings going on this week, 27 this year, people have reached out to me and asked me the stuff that I do or have done with my kid. So I'm just going to run through a few of those things here. If it helps you, great. If you don't like it or approve, I mean, do what you will. It's what I'm doing so I can have sleep and peace of mind when I'm going throughout my day. First things first, your kid needs to listen to you. Like at age of three or four, uh, Leah would understand that if I called her name, she could be in a park with 500 kids. She would come to me if I called out her name. Now she's in the house. If I call her name, she says yes. If I respond with nothing, her job is to come find me. If there's an instruction I can give while she's like in a room, like I call out her name and I say, hey, go feed the dog. It's very simple. When she was younger, I did not abuse this and have her come when called for trivial things. So I need her to understand that it was very important. Like if you were running around playing, maybe you're about to run to the street. If I called her name, she stopped dead in her tracks. She looked to me to find me. And it's just worked out really well for us. So much so, one year we were at a family Thanksgiving. Leah was probably around 10 at this point. And uh, one of the friends was like, man, you're really controlling. Like Leah just listens to you. I'm like, it's not a control thing, it's a respect thing. But I mean, if you were thinking about control, I mean, I could tell Leah to smack anybody in this house and she'd do it. And everybody's like, oh, they're like, Leah, would you smack grandma if your dad told you to? And she's like, yeah, I would. Leah, you know that's wrong, right? She's like, I listen to my dad and I respect adults, but I listen to my dad. And I'm like, Leah, but that's wrong. You shouldn't do something that you know is wrong. And she said, my dad wouldn't put me in a place of danger. He has my best interest at heart, and anything he asks me to do is something that needs to be done. Then she gave the example, have you seen The Lion King? Mufasa didn't have to die, but Simba wouldn't listen to his dad. You watch all these Disney movies with your kids, a lot of people, Bambi, parents be dying, best friends be dying. Talk about trauma at an early age. We had these discussions very early on, like, yo, you need to listen to me. Like, if you just listen to me, I promise you, we're going to have all the fun in the world, all the things that you want to do, we're going to get done, but you got to listen to me. And so it is, and that's the way we roll. And that's the first thing you got to get your kid to trust you, listen to you, believe in you. Don't abuse that trust when they give it to you. Moving on to elementary school. She had an Apple Watch on her with the SOS, called my, her mom, called me, called the police. I had to argue with the teachers because they weren't allowed to have electronics. I'm like, look, she needs to have this watch on. I don't care. She's not playing with it. She's not playing games. It's, it doesn't have games on it. She just, she needs to have this watch on. It is what it is. That was the argument that I got, but it worked out. Secondly, um, a bulletproof shield in her backpack. I can't show you the one that I've had for a really long time because... It is a military grade and technically I'm not supposed to have it and the branding's on it so I can't show it to you. But there is a company that I recommend to people, uh, it's called Tuffy Packs and they make bulletproof backpacks but I wouldn't get one of those. I would get one of the shields. They have ones that like are eight and a half by 11 or one that's a little bit bigger if you have a bigger backpack. Uh, but that way you can swap it in and out of backpacks as the kid gets older. And so you're not just stuck to them having one backpack because you know, kids change their mind and they want new stuff. Also, Talk to your child's teacher, offer them a door lock or a door jam. There's all different kinds of ones. Uh, I'm gonna link, show one up here right now. Uh, I'll put links in the description. There's no affiliates. I'm not trying to make money off of any, any of this stuff, just informational based. But you wanna have your, your teacher needs to have a door lock because just locking the door, if you have an assault rifle, you can shoot that lock off and come in there if you want. But there's ones, depending on the door type, that jam the door shut. So no matter what, the door won't open unless somebody pulls it out from the inside. I would suggest getting one of those for your teacher or asking your teacher if they want to buy one of those. Lord knows they spend enough of their own money anyway, but it's an investment that I would make in my kid. And uh, just tell them, hey, at the end of the year, I'm going to take it. It's going to the fourth grade, fifth grade with my kid. Sorry, but again, I'm worried about mine. So the backpack is key because the way her room was set up in that school is the door, then there's cubbies. Then there's usually a window across, and then there's no windows on the other side and no other doors on the other side. In the event of pops, which is what we called them, and I'll discuss how we talked to her about that in a second, she would crawl to her cubby, get her backpack, put it on her chest. If the teacher had her leaving the room, she had to have her backpack with her on her back. At that age, I couldn't tell her to run for her own safety or climb out a window or do anything. She has to follow the teacher's instructions at that age, but she needed to get to her bag. She had to crawl, get to her cubby, get her bag, 
and put her on her chest. And when leaving the room, she had to put her on her back. And thankfully, we never had any of those issues in elementary school. But things were in place for her to have a chance for herself besides just the drills that the school would do occasionally. Moving on to high school, still have the backpack, carry around with her everywhere. It's got the shield in it. But now is the time when you need to know your exits. My biggest thing is you've got to get out of the building. She knows she has to get out of that building. So far, she's a freshman. There was an active shooter alert earlier on in the year. She called me. I was home. I was at the school grounds immediately. They have an amber light, so you can't approach the school. But she got away from her classroom, got to the locker rooms on the side of the building where there's multiple exits to get out. And I said, stay in the locker room. Doors locked. Uh, there was happened to be the gym teacher was in there too. And I said, just stay there. If we hear any kind of gunfire, then we're going to make a move. So we, we didn't know if it was a drill. We didn't know what was going on because again, when they email you and call you late, nobody's got any information for you. You don't know what's going on. And by that point, Kids could be dead. Something could be going wrong. But I was in full communication with my daughter on the phone. She had me. I had her on speakerphone. I was listening to everything. There were no gunshots. But if there were, I'm not Rambo. I'm not a ninja, Gaiden type dude. But I do believe in the Second Amendment. And I was on site. And she did know what to do and how to get out of that building so that I could get to her and get her off the property safely. And as we just saw in this Texas shooting, parents weren't allowed to go in and try to save their kids. But officers went in and saved only their kids instead of trying to stop the shooter. They went looking for their kids. So you need to have a plan in place to worry about you and yours. And that's what I'm worried about. She did grab her friend on the way because Bessie's got to roll with us too. Um, pops is what I called them early on when I was telling her about these things. And the way that I had her listen out for gunshots were firecrackers around the holidays. We'd go out to a field, I'd have her close her eyes, I'd throw them and ask her where the sound was coming from. During that whole week, your whole neighborhood's popping off. We'd sit in the car, try to figure out where the sound's coming from. We'd sit on the front porch, where's the sound coming from? Just so she can get spatial awareness of recognizing reverb and where things are going and in a non-threatening environment because it's fireworks and it happens every year anyway. But we would sit down and treat it like a game so that she would know what direction, meaning what direction to go away from. Uh, let's move on to uh, movie theaters. We go to movies all the time. When I tell you these things, it's just about thinking about things you do all the time and ways that you can be aware and alert about your situations. In the movies, I never sit in the front row. I never sit in the back three rows. I always sit in the middle. And I, oh, in the larger theaters, I always sit adjacent of the front exit door so that I can see it and get out. Always. If the movie's full and I can't sit in these seats in the middle on this side, I just won't go or I'll catch another uh, later movie. In a smaller theater, same thing. We sit in the middle, but I sit all the way to the wall because in those theaters, the, the door is on one side and the back door is adjacent. And in that situation, if there was something to go off, she is to get down on the floor on the seats in front of us and I'm going to lay on top of her and cover her. And if we get a shot up, hopefully I take it and she doesn't. But that's our standard protocol for when we're at the movies. If we're at a grocery store, only our local grocery stores. I, I can't, again, I can't, worry about everything and everywhere the place we go to all the time that we should know like the back of our hand we know where the exits are in the grocery stores we know where the uh, side storage doors are and in case of a shooter knock everything off as quickly as possible where you are and then get on the bottom row of the aisle that's my suggestion that's my thought process my thing is if somebody's coming down that aisle and they look and see bottles pop stuff trash all over the aisle maybe they don't want to walk down that aisle and trip over something. So knock everything off as quick as possible and get on the bottom shelf and just keep your head down and hope for the best if you cannot get out of that area. When we go out to eat, I always eat facing the door. When she's with me, she doesn't have to worry about that, but when she's with her mother or with her friends, she always watches the door. And while we're waiting for our food, we watch people to come in. We talk about how they look, whether they're happy or sad or, you know, that guy looks like they've got money. What do they drive? Like we make a game of it, just observing people and thinking about how they are or what they're doing in the world, just to be observant and paying attention to people's mannerisms and things like that. And I just never <laughs> not sit looking at the door. I just, it's a, it's an OCD habit for me. I don't have many of them, but that's one of them. Uh, so that's what we do. And she does it when she's not with me and she's with her friends. She's always aware of what's going on around the door. My daughter 
is a confident kid. The show we do is Ra uh, Raising a Ninja and soccer, basketball, jiu-jitsu, karate, MMA, and wrestling. As far as I'm concerned, if you want your daughter to dance or whatever you want your kid to do, every girl should do wrestling. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. When she went in to wrestling, uh, it was her choice. She asked to do it. She talked one of her friends into doing it. And when she showed up, she's on the mat. A guy that I wrestled with in high school was there with me. He's got four daughters, one son. He's like, oh. He's like, what, what's going on with these girls in here now? Who let the dykes in here? And I'm like, um, well, that one is my daughter, and she got her friend to come. And he's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to you know, offend you or anything like that. I was like, what's the most important thing about wrestling? I'm not going to say his name. What's the most important thing about wrestling? He's like, wrist control and hip control. I'm like, exactly. So one in four or one in five women get assaulted, right? Sexually assaulted. I was like, good luck with that with your kids. And he's like, oh, you're, that, I can't believe you said that about my daughters. And I'm like, I don't know. You just said something about my daughter. My daughters are here to learn how to protect herself. Because you get three minutes straight, two minutes each round, no, six minutes total, of fighting off your back. It was three minutes when they started because they were warming around. Now they're two minute rounds. But fighting off your back, having someone try to pin you. That experience is invaluable. And it's not in a terrorizing, threatening, oh my gosh way. But it'd be nice if your daughter knew how to flip her hips peel off control, you know, fight off of her back when someone's trying to pin her, switch positions. It'd be nice. I'm just saying, uh, it'd be nice. So that would be my suggestion to you to stick your kid in wrestling early. Even if they don't like it, if they only do it for a year, just try and get them to go through one year so they get some basic principles on that so they can protect and defend themselves. And uh, that's just my quick notes on school stuff. And, and protection in general, because you have to worry about it everywhere you go. And it's more than just making sure that a woman stays on the inside of the street for you or a boy, your child, any child, male, female, whatever. We got to protect our kids. We got to help them, help you, help them, help us. Hugs to everybody. Super stressful and sad situation that we're in this terrible cycle. So do the best you can with what you got. Hopefully that's helpful to you and have a good day. Hugs.